Now after two days of big seas and big ground swells, as well as receiving certain information from the area, we had to make our last day count, with the highest probability of potentially getting a good fish. And even though we didn't have any live bait, we opted for the lighthouse as there were very few other anglers and no one at lighthouse. The main objective would be putting out cob baits to try and lure in a bite, as well as throwing some paddle tails. Punskop, um, and uh, we couldn't get a bait, keep a bait in the water there. So we made it to the lighthouse. We don't have live bait, so we're doing what we can. There's no one here, so chance. We put a um, chocker bait, put it in a spot uh, our favour, and uh, we might throw some paddle tails just now, and we'll move the day, move around. The tide is pulling back. It was four o'clock high. It's now just off to six. So it's a pulling tide and when the tide turns we'll start moving along with the paddle tails. But yeah, it's our last day so let's hope we're here for a very short period, two and a half days, three days. Um, so we'll see and we hope today pays off. <laughs> tail here on the side and hope we get somewhere with it. Take the, the water's off colour and I should take a brighter one. Uh, I think she's a thicker leader. Alright Nice bright colour, water is a bit off colour. So there's a thing here, you must find your way after a while. She do get stuck quite a bit, it's using a figure eight. Here we go, let's see what we can do. Lighthouse. Water's looking uh, nice. Seems a bit big in the back, but over here we're fishing is quite not that hectic. Yeah, I've got a chaka bait out here. And I'm fishing a bite face. The only reason why I'm fishing a bite face is because it's deep water. There's a good possibility of a grey being around or even a hammer. So I'm playing it safe for now. That's the only reason why I'm going to bite face. But I do see a cop come out. I'm gonna go straight nylon and fish uh, the areas we're hunting them up. I'm actually throwing in the opening you know. Yeah, hopefully we can get a bite. Uh, like I said, straight chocker, uh, two tentacles in a circle, and then uh, a bearded slip over. I'll show you guys later, but I'll do a bit again later for you guys. That's exactly what I did. This year. I just had a small time inquiry here now, and uh, it didn't pull flat, so I left it. I just left it. Uh, it wasn't a big fish, it's a smaller fish. Maybe the factors that I put in on the way. So hopefully we go on tight. Uh, quite excited about the morning. So yeah, see you guys soon. My name is Freedom uh, from Poonscope, Boston Johns. I'm a fishing assistant. We're here in Lighthouse. We're here to catch some fish. We'll see what we can get today. Now, 
pushing tide would have been more ideal for this particular area as fish start moving into the lighthouse area and towards the mouth when the tide pushes. But when it's your last morning, you still give it a good shot. Okay, I'm, I'm going to decide to scratch it, but you're in the front. This water's looking too tempting in the front not to scratch, so I'm going to definitely scratch in the front. So I got my level for six power spin. My salty got four five, and I got thirty pound bait for now. Thirty pound JDB bait. Make a standard scratching place. I'm gonna put either a chocker and a prawn blob bait, or I might just go with straight prawn. I was speaking to the to the gillies. They told me the locals get some nice uh, piping in the front here, as well as big prawn things and rasha comes around this time of the year. So I'm gonna put a bait for them and see if I'm going fast. Water's nice. Really, really, really It's got a bit of a wash, but uh, in the gullies of fish uh, and sinker with a very, very light uh, sinker slip. So if I do hit the rocks, I can cross up easily. I don't mind losing that sinker. Alright, yeah. guys, I'll make a quick page up for the bronzes or anything else that's uh, around. Then you start off with a normal prawn, want to go prawn and chocker combo. But uh, let's try the head on prawn. I got these from Ed Can. They smell nice, they smell really nice. So nice that you actually want to eat them now. Let's hope the fish feel the same way. So I just dish them. And uh, that's a prawn, a lot of oil it's got. Just gonna split it down the center. That's a prawn. So basically what you do is you turn it inside out on your hook. Take your hook. Make sure the hook is always proud. Turn the prawn inside out. And then you put cotton. Now what I like to do with the prawn, I put just a little on the top. And then as I go further down, I start putting a bit more. So when I come to the top is where I actually put a lot. I'll show you guys here. And the main reason why I put a lot on the top just to hold it straight and at the bottom I want it to fluff so when it hits the water it's gonna fluff out a couple half inches one more pull your cotton all the way tight take it off get your bait out okay and that's my prawn bait nice lovely prawn bait that we're gonna get a nice bronzy or oh, anything that's here that's gonna chow it in the leaf. Alright well, guys, actually said let me have a little bit more fun. So I took my power power spin and my saltika out but it's actually over gun for what I'm gonna be doing now. So I said have some fun, go a bit lighter. Shimano Nexus, double crossfire rod, eight pound crystal braid, and have some fun with the bronzes. Have a battle here in the transcard. So let's go put this bait and get a fish. We hold the knowledge of the world in the palm of our hands. Okay, guys, that's a nice stony we got here. I don't want to take a chance of picking him up too much, so I had to fight him. Right? Of the world. Nice tackle, Gushi. Nice fun here in the trans sky. Lovely storm beam. I actually lobbed this right in front of the rocks in the, in the front here. I knew they'd be around. So that was like about 10 seconds after I threw and I had the pull. I'm using a mustard uh, one oak here. Got him perfect. Let's get this hook out. Okay. Lovely fish. We're gonna get him back, release him safely.
much for trying for a cob there in the, close to the rocks. Uh, put a dangle, this is my cob dangle, it's got a glow bead on, which really makes a difference at night, not now. And then I'm just going to build a strong body, these pickers around. So something that will cover my foam and also have two tentacles at the top. And there I just put half slits so I can fold it nicely around the foam. And you put hook first. And a bit further up. Covers it nicely and you've got the two tentacles over the hook. Just from a, my logic, um, that movement of those tails over the hook, a cob normally grabs a bait fish from the back, from the tail side as well, or over the body. So that uh, should help with the hookup. And then you see, I never, with the solid chalk, I don't fold it right round because I want the foam to actually grip it nicely so it doesn't slide up and down. It's just to build the body. And that I secure nicely now. The movement of this whole bait in the water with those two uh, two tentacles we're leaving should keep give that movement an imitation of a bait fish. Just a nice piece of beaten that'll fold around. Let's beat it and see how big it is. Now when it's at night, I leave that bead either with very thin chocker or open to get that shine out. And that will wrap. I'll first see now how much I'm going to use. I don't want it too thick. Keep it in proportion with my bait. I want to put maybe a bit of belly shine on the side there. of shine can provoke the bite for us. Now with this rough water, if the cop doesn't really like the rough water, but we're trying, they could come in. Um, this will be moving around. So if it can have that bit of flash with the sun on the water now, it could provoke a bite, but uh, they use their lateral lines to feel that vibration and movement in the water. So it's a lot of foam, Rough, a fairly rough sea. We're throwing behind a rock to the more calmer water where the cob will hide. But that movement might uh, attract them from a distance and they could come and uh, just grab it without, uh, you know, when they, when they uh, ambush the bait fish, it's a quick movement. They just shoot, they grab. And that's what we're hoping for with this. Sometimes your prediction comes true and you're not quite ready for it. And that's exactly what happened with this cast. As I was walking back off to the cast, something grabbed it and came straight in. The common behavior of the cob here and wrapped my leader around a rock 10 meters in. To Kamara and Stonebeam, and the two cob bites I had, everything went dead quiet. Okay, uh, two, two good uh, pulls there, but they pulled me into the rocks this morning. It's gone dead now. The last hour, I didn't have a pull there. I'm just gonna move a bit left. You can see the brown water sucking out here. Just slightly to the left, I'm gonna put another bait and see. That's all we can do until the tide's right to move around the corner. Often while scratching for smaller fish on the side, a crayfish will pick up your bait, as happened with Freedom. On the turn of the tide, we moved over to First Rocks to fish the push into the estuary.
We've instructed our guides to try and find us live bait, as this will make a difference. But in the meantime, I hacked it off with the paddle tail. It wasn't long and they managed to get us one black tail, which Kamaran felt was a bit big for him to use, as he didn't bring any sliding gear. I didn't have to think about it. This black tail was going one way. Now it wasn't long, and that just goes to show again, live bait makes a difference in this area specifically. paid off the black tail <laughs> it's too big come on <laughs> I want the smaller one but it was bad for you nice fish nothing wrong I reckon what do you think eight seven eight okay. alright Get some now a friendly request to all anglers out there to consider to let these beautiful specimens go. They are very vulnerable and under immense fishing pressure. Allowing another angler to experience these fights is a must. One small black tail we managed to get and we put it out and it was a guarantee. We've got a big black tail but I think it's just too big to actually put out. The Garrick won't get it down the, the pellet. I don't, I don't think they'll even try. So yeah, this is this time of the year that just started literally. The Garrick started three days ago here. Yeah? We actually came here because the cob was around but since we've been here, no cob whatsoever. I suspect I had two, uh, two pickups this morning there by Lighthouse. But I can't say for sure, they pulled me straight into the bricks. Um, so yeah, I think uh, no reason to complain now. At least got a Gary, because today is our last afternoon. <laughs> it went quick, but I will continue and see. Maybe we can get another one interested. While I was busy on the paddle tail, Kumaran started throwing the plug to see if there's any other Gary around, while our fishing guides were looking for more live bait. They managed to find some small pinkies and I was definitely going to put it out. It wasn't five minutes and the pinky got picked up. The fish started swimming towards me, as opposed to what a Garrick will do. I had to quickly bring the sinker closer and try to set the hooks, but unfortunately this wasn't a solid hookup, and we had reason to believe that this was a cob. Uh, I set that hook several times, still came off. And it's such a small bait, you don't have to let it swim too far. managed to get us a mullet. Chuffed about that. My taste is a bit small. Just put it under the skin this hook. I have to let them eat properly. The 
confidence was high having two live mullet in the water. Mine, however, kept on swimming out as I was fishing a return slide. When Kamaran checked his bait, the mullet was dead. We came to the end of the session and decided to take an additional live mullet we had and put it in the river in front of Spotted Grunter. Good morning guys and girls and thank you for watching. I'm standing with Vernon Mullion from Spotted Grunter Resort in Port St. John's. Now Vernon has taken over here five years ago and you've done a great job here Vernon. It's really one of the most reputable resorts. So if you haven't been to Port St. John's or you come here often and you haven't stayed with a Spotted Grunter, you guys better try Spotted Grunter because it's one of the best venues here. Well done on that, uh, Vernon. You guys have got a lot of facilities here. Yeah, thanks, Andre. Uh, yeah, we started five years ago. We've done a lot of improvements on the resort. When we first moved here, it had uh, 17 rooms. We've now got 28 rooms. Sure. So there's no more room for expansion. So now it's just... Um, maintenance and keeping it up to standard um, yes there's a there's a restaurant there's a, a bar so all the rooms are uh, have self catering we've got everything in the rooms from fridges microwaves stoves all the cutlery crockery so everything is equipped so if you do come here you can either cook in your rooms or you can eat at the restaurant or come to our bar or there's bar facilities so you're welcome to make use of the bar facilities yeah, and we specifically um, look after the fishermen, you know, uh, we've got a, a fully equipped fishing tackle shop. In the five years that I've been here, I've, st I've studied the area quite well, so I know where the good fishing spots are. We run a fishing charter business. Yeah, I saw the deep sea, nice boat. Yeah, you know, yeah, the deep sea charter. We have a 19 foot tomcat which can take uh, five fishermen, so we take them out to sea, stretch your arms a bit. With some decent fish. Next time we're going to take you up on that. We didn't this time. <laughs> yeah, and then we also do ocean viewing trips. We have a, a super duck, so if people want to go and see the whales and dolphins and whatnot. Waterfall Bluff is a huge attraction. We take people out on a on a super duck. Yeah. And you're surrounded by just wonder. It's amazing scenery, fish cleaning facility. Something some people miss on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And live bait, you've got live bait facilities? Yes, so whenever I go out I try and come back with a few live baits and I put them in our live bait while they're on our jetty. So if you're staying with us and we have live bait, you're welcome to help yourself to the live bait. That's a big thing. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, like I say, we try and look after the fishermen. Um, we have a, a deep freeze specifically catered for the fishermen. So there's lots of deep freeze facilities. Well, Vernon, thank you very much for the stay. It was really pleasant. Uh, one of the best places I've stayed along the coast, never mind Port St. John's. And we really enjoyed it here. Thank you Great. very much. Thank you, Andre. Guys, that wraps it up. So you can go to the, the Spotted Grunter website. It's spottedgrunter.co.za. That's correct, yes. And everything is on there as well. Uh, contact details and then facilities are nicely laid out there so you can see what they offer. But thank you again, Vernon. Great. Thanks, Andre. And Thanks we'll for staying with us. And we'll see you soon us. again. Good. Thanks, Thanks. a lot. Cheers. Now these are the guys to use when you come to Port St. John's. It's Freedom and Matthew. Uh, they can't fish, but they're really good in uh, helping you find the spots, find the fish, and I'm just joking on they can't find fish. <laughs> they eventually <laughs> found us a lot, but, but it's always a pleasure seeing you guys, and thank you very much, eh? Yeah. Okay, we'll miss you guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> now thank you all for watching and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to our channel that really helps us and hit the bell notification button to be notified every time we upload a video also like this video as that helps with the algorithms of youtube